Hey all, I'm Paul Reese, a developer advocate with Google, and this is a series introducing machine learning and its application on Android with the MediaPipe framework. In this lesson, I'm going to introduce you to the concepts behind computer vision at a very high level. That way you can have a better understanding of what your code is doing in your apps without needing to be a data scientist. There are three main tasks that you'll learn about today. Image classification, object detection, and gesture recognition. Let's start by taking a look at image classification. The goal of image classification is to assign a label or multiple labels to an image. For example, with a single label classification model, the image of a cat will likely appear as cat since it's the most pronounced item in the image. However, if you use a model for multiple labels, then you might see cat, rug, or toy as possible labels. Cool, so let's take a quick look into how this classification happens. The underlying model that I'll cover is using something called a convolutional neural network. This model's main way to approach image classification is to look for patterns within images during training, then look for those same patterns in new images. Getting back to the cat image, let's say that we have thousands of cat pictures, which obviously no cat owner has just laying around on their phone. But we can start noticing trends in things like ear shape, eye shape, and nose shape. Now, if we take those patterns and look at a brand new image, we should be able to identify those items, or at least most of them, so the model can say that there is a cat with some level of confidence. The next thing to know is that this classification happens across multiple layers of an image. For example, Android may provide an ARGB image. Since the alpha layer doesn't really give us much information, we can just go ahead and drop that. But then the rest of the colors are looked at to try and perform classification with various patterns noticeable across different layers. Finally, images may need to go through a few pre-classification steps to scale, shape, or rotate them so that they match the image parameters that the model was trained with. For example, a model may have shrunk images to 32 pixels by 32 pixels, so your Android app will need to do the same to perform classification. This is known as pre-processing. Now that we have a better understanding of image classification, let's move on to object detection. This not only classifies objects in an image or video, but it also attempts to identify where those objects are to construct a bounding box area around them. So the first thing to understand is that the term object detection is a little misleading, since we're not just detecting the presence of an object, but we're actually performing three unique steps. First, we're gonna do what you would normally call object detection, which is determining where an object might be based on statistical analysis. In this image, we can see that there are multiple potential objects, including cup, potted plant, and laptop. Once our model has an idea about where some objects may exist, it attempts to recognize those objects through a classification process, similar to what we previously saw. And the last step is localization. This is where the bounding boxes are determined for the detected objects. The other thing to know about object detection is that it can be incredibly difficult to get great results when using a custom model. So you'll want to keep an eye out for edge cases that may need to be addressed when you're given a model. Some of these edge cases include overlapping objects, different rotations and sizes for objects compared to the training data, or only partial objects existing within an image. The final task that you'll learn about is gesture recognition. As you might guess from the name, gesture recognition can look at one or more hands and determine what predefined gestures are being made by the user. For example, you may have an Android TV app that supports rating content based on a thumbs up or thumbs down provided by the user. What's interesting about gesture recognition is that, like object detection, it's made up of multiple steps. But expanding on that a bit, gesture recognition is also made up of multiple different models. Because of the way MediaPipe task is designed, multiple models can be chained together to do even more complex operations. To give you a better idea, gesture recognition consists of three separate models. The first detects the presence and location of a hand. The second finds specific landmarks on the hand, such as fingertips and various joints. And the third performs the primary step of determining the gesture. Later on in this series, you will see exactly how you would perform gesture recognition on a live camera feed with Android, as well as how you would take it a step further by training your own model for the game Rock, Paper, Scissors. So now that you have some of the theory behind computer vision down, 
it's time to go over how it can be used. In the next video, we'll look at how these topics can be applied using Android's MediaPipe task. So I'll see you there.